Adam, let's get a check of the cryptocurrency market. Bitcoin prices are trading slightly higher this afternoon, hovering around $48,000, whereas Ethereum, the second largest cryptocurrency by market cap, is down to just over $4,000. For more on the future of cryptocurrencies and exchange-traded funds, we're welcoming in Ben Slavin, BNY Mellon Global Head of ETFs, Asset Servicing. And Ben, thank you so much for joining us. I want to first highlight one key metric from a recent Grayscale survey with a stat noting that 77% of U.S. investors said they would be more likely to invest in Bitcoin if an ETF existed. What have you been hearing from BNY Mellon's clients about demand for a Bitcoin ETF? Do they want one tracking spot prices or derivatives or other cryptocurrencies? What is demand looking like right now? Well, demand seems to be increasing um, with every passing week here. So globally, um, we have about 78 products that are tracking some form of digital asset. Um, and those flows continue to grow with now over 60 billion in assets uh, tied to these products. So the demand is clearly there. Here in the US, we lack a spot product, um, but we still have all these investors coming in. So many of those investors in that survey are new to crypto, the majority of them uh, making their first purchase uh, in the past year. And so they're looking for ways to get exposure. And there are different ETFs and different um, themed ETFs that hold equities that are looking to capture this trend and soak up some of this demand while we wait for a spot product. And while we're waiting, as we're, and it's good to see you again, by the way, Ben. Um, good to see listening you. to what you just said, do we need the spot product? How would that help me as someone? You pointed out some, it's the first time at the rodeo for some of these investors already in the products that they can already uh, invest into. But how is that going to help people who may not truly grasp what they're purchasing? Well, there are key differences between these products. So, the short answer is there still is a place and demand for a spot product, but there are other ways that U.S. investors can play this trade. Um, so we've seen products uh, more recently that hold futures. Um, we have seen products like the Grayscale product, which was mentioned just a minute ago, that holds spot Bitcoin, but ultimately uh, does have other features that sometimes have a trade uh, at a discount or, or potentially a premium uh, historically to NAV. But also we have thematic ETFs that um, are continuing to be launched by a wide variety of issuers that are trying different ways to get some kind of correlated exposure to Bitcoin or digital assets, but do so via equities. But what's very important is investors to really understand the differences between these products, um, how they operate uh, so they can profit from them and, and really understand how to use them in their portfolio. SEC Chairman Gary Gensler has repeatedly talked about concerns about ETFs that directly hold Bitcoin. So what's your expectation on a potential timeline for a spot product or what hurdles do you see as needing to be cleared first? Well, we're about eight years into the journey um, and that journey is, is continuing. Um, at this point, the comments uh, made by Chairman Gensler and the SEC make me think that we are not on the precipice of a approval uh, of a Bitcoin ETF. Um, however, I think um, there will continue to be pressure put on the SEC uh, to, to approve these products. And also, I think we're going to see um, other products continue to be filed, um, such as products that may hold Ethereum futures uh, to provide uh, those types of exposures to ETF investors. And certainly, we have seen in markets outside of the U.S., uh, these products continue to proliferate where, uh, you know, certain regulators uh, have allowed these products to come to market and they've done so quite successfully uh, and have been operating as expected. Um, I want to shift gears slightly because in the notes I was reading and congratulations that Bank of New York Mellon has a robust global, this is the quote, ETF platform gaining more than $1 trillion dollars over the past year. And of course, you know, partners like Grayscale Investments, First Trust, ARK Investment Management, although uh, uh, Kathy has a few issues uh, today that she's warning investors about. But where do we stand? I, why have ETFs not uh, essentially made uh, traditional mutual funds just go away? There's no liquidity with a mutual fund and the tax consequences with ETFs are quite clear. So why haven't they just totally replaced them? Well, the trend has been in place for a while. 
and that trend is accelerating. Um, this year, we are um, about to see record industry flows. Right now, we're over 850 billion. I don't think we're going to reach a trillion, but it is fair to say we are going to shatter uh, the records. Uh, in terms of flow. And much of that flow is at the direct expense of the mutual fund industry. I think there are many reasons for that. Um, you know, one of those really is embedded capital gains that are inherent in a lot of these mutual fund holdings. Um, and this year, um, we're going to see a percentage of those mutual funds distribute out um, a significant portion of their value in the form of capital gains by shareholders who have either taken profits or have rotated out to things like ETFs. And that's going to be start to be a catalyst um, for, again, investors to continue that shift away from the mutual fund structure into ETFs. And so I do expect, um, again, this trend to continue. Hard to know if we're going to stay at this unbelievable record pace, but um, you know, I think that trend line um, will certainly continue into 22 and beyond uh, as we continue to accelerate here. All right. Thank you so much for that breakdown. Ben Slavin, BNY Mellon Global Head of ETFs Asset Servicing, thank you so much for joining us.